after nearly six fantastic months in South Africa, the ocean is calling us again. It is time to move on. Time to set sail into the unknown once more. It is time to cross 5,600 miles of the South Atlantic Ocean on our way to the Caribbean. This is the start of that voyage. We are Matt and Amy. We have spent the last six years sailing our 37-foot sailboat Florence around the world. In that time we have crossed three oceans, over 36,000 miles have passed under our keel, and we are now closing in on the goal to complete our circumnavigation. Before us lies the Atlantic Ocean, which we will now cross twice in order to reach the shores of England once more. It's finally time to leave Hout Bay. Haven't moved Florence for over three months, but we've got to go around to Royal Cape Yacht Club because that's where she has to be for us to check out of South Africa. Uh, it's only about 20 miles, so it shouldn't take us too long, and it's a beautiful day, nice bit of breeze. We've really loved our time in Hout Bay and we're really sad to be leaving, but it's coming to that point in the season where we need to be making tracks north, but we should have a beautiful sail today and hopefully get stunning views of Table Mountain and the Twelve Apostles. What does it feel like to be out sailing again? feels great to be out sailing again. Although we are a little bit rusty, our first couple of tacks were absolutely atrocious and we had to run down below to put away the few things that got thrown across the boat uh, that we didn't store away properly. Hout Bay could not let us leave without testing that we were ready. We rapidly had to reef as this rain squall brought 28 knots of wind all of a sudden. Well, it's good to have a little squall just at the start to check everything works. A bit hectic as they say in South Africa. Nice to sail in company for a change, just round from Hout Bay round to Royal Cape, ready to check out. And uh, this is Marcus, and he's travelling around the world, not just by sail, but by kayak, by paddleboard, by bicycle, by foot, anything that doesn't involve a motor. And so you can't give him a lift in your car, uh, and he won't use the engine on the boat even to get into a marina. So it's a real challenge. So when he gets to the other end, he either has to sail the boat into the marina, or the guy that's with him is going to motor the boat in whilst he paddles alongside in a kayak so that he doesn't use an engine to get around the world.
Sailing on the coast of South Africa offers no protection from the southern ocean swells, so a plain hide and seek between the waves with Marcus. This rolling swell is by no means dangerous and is actually fairly small for the open ocean here. Marcus confirmed that Florence looked to be bouncing around just as much as he was. That swell was really knocking the wind out of both of our sails. After taking photos of each other, we set our course for the city, pulled out the Genoa, set a preventer on the main and rolled with it. This is our standard downwind ocean sailing setup and one that will see us through thousands of miles up and across the Atlantic Ocean. With our sails flogging less and the advantage of being a bigger boat with a faster hull speed, we said see you in Cape Town and disappeared over the horizon. Rod and Holder has all been very kindly given to us by a guy called Craig who uh, just found us in the marina in Hout Bay. He's been watching the videos and seen us fishing with a hand line all the time and says he had to give us something better so he's just given us this and a whole box of lures so we've got no excuses for not catching our dinner now. Really cool. Cool and I've tied it on because I just really, really don't want to lose this rod and reel. This is the first proper fishing rod that we've ever had, so hopefully we'll not only do you proud, Craig, but eat really well over the South Atlantic. In the mist looking out of these mountains, we've got, these are the ones we could see from out bay, and then We've got the Twelve Apostles just coming up and then Table Mountain ahead with the top of it just in the clouds. Go around Lion's Head and then into Table Bay. And quite often you get strong winds coming down Table Mountain so we have to be careful when we come around the corner that we're prepared in case it suddenly gets windy. As we sailed further along the coast, the wind shifted to come off the mountains. So we were keeping a careful lookout for any big gusts of wind and we put in a reef to reduce our sail size just in case. Although we have been out racing on smaller boats during our time here in Hout Bay, we have not moved Florence at all. It has been an amazing opportunity to rest and recharge ourselves after all the remote living and sailing big distances across the Indian Ocean over the previous 10 months. We did not realise that we needed it but having had this break, we now feel completely re-energised and excited to sail and explore once more. It feels amazing to be sailing Florence again, especially with this magnificent coastline as a backdrop. We had a stunning view of Table Mountain as we came into Cape Town. 
This will sadly be our final stop in South Africa, as it's the only international checkout port on the west coast. There are two main marinas in Cape Town. The more central, and therefore more expensive, is the V&A at the waterfront. But we are heading to the Royal Cape Yacht Club, which is based within the docks in the more industrial area of the city. It is still only a short drive from the centre, but it's also where customs and immigration are based, which is where we need to be to check out of South Africa and start our South Atlantic adventure. Safely tied up in the Royal Cape Yacht Club marina, we waited for Marcus to arrive and to find out exactly how he would be getting into the marina without using his engine. Marcus arrived a few hours later, but understandably didn't want to risk sailing in past all the expensive yachts on the docks. So they tied up at the emergency mooring and then Marcus chose to swim ashore while his friend Jack motors his boat into the dock. Marcus has sailed around to Royal Cape for the same reason as us. He is also checking out of South Africa to continue his circumnavigation onward across the South Atlantic. Whilst we were both waiting for a weather window to depart, I caught up with Marcus to share some of his incredible journey with you. So how big is she? She's 27 feet. Wow. Nice. 8.3 meters. It's a Canadian design originally, CNC 27, but this is built in England under the Trapper 500 name. Oh wow. Matt says our boat is too small for houseplants, but um, you have clearly proved him wrong. Uh, yeah, so I'm circumnavigating the planet without ever using a motor. And uh, I started this trip because I asked myself what I would do if I found out that I was going to die. Um, and I asked myself that question because my dad called me up and told me he was going to die in a couple of weeks out of nowhere. Um, he got a rare form of acute myeloid leukemia and at the time I was fighting forest fires and I wanted to work in environmental social justice and so I just combined everything I love into one project and that's Roots of Change. So um, going around the world and raising support for small local nonprofit organizations and uh, yeah just getting around under my own steam. And now I'm on this sailboat, Samudra. I bought her in India. Uh, it's the only boat I could find in India. A uh, young 20 year old Australian kid had sailed it from England to India. And then lockdown happened and I found it. Paid 6,000 US for it, put another 4,000, maybe 5,000 into it. And then uh, after four months, I sailed out of India. It was a 40 day sail to the Seychelles because I had no wind. <laughs> and then Tanzania and then uh, yeah but yeah. So we're obviously we're in Cape Town at the moment so how did you get here you've obviously had to cross an ocean before the Indian Ocean. Yes so I actually started the trip in a canoe and I was going west across Canada so I started from Toronto Canada in the Great Lakes I started in a canoe I didn't know how I was going to get across Canada the rest of the way my backup was to get a bicycle but I kept on getting lent things I got lent a Hobie trimaran for Lake Superior another canoe a hand cycle, a tricycle, uh, I skied, I rafted, I kayaked, I stand up paddle boarded, canoed again, then I rode to the States and I met a friend of a friend who I met while I was on the trip. Um, he uh, was getting an Allberg 30 ready to sail from Hawaii to, or from San Francisco to Hawaii. And so he wanted help, crew, and so we sailed together, 25 day sail. That was my first ocean sailing trip. And it was his first big crossing also, so we were sort of newbies, but the Alberg 30s, beautiful boat, super seaworthy, so it sort of sailed herself, and uh, we just held on for the ride. And then we got to Hawaii, and he marooned me. <laughs> uh, so he just wanted to go solo and not have any 
pressure to get me somewhere. So I understood, yeah. but I was also super angry at the time. But I was nice to him, thankfully. And uh, he came back to Hawaii after having a bit of an issue in Kiribati. And he lent me his boat, sort of rented me, lent it me, oh. gave him a free yacht delivery. Um, so yeah, I sailed out of Hawaii solo on this Alpert 30 to the Marshall Islands, through Micronesia, I had crazy flesh eating bacteria all the way through Micronesia. Wow. So good. <laughs> Where's your next stop and where do you plan to finish this trip with the boat? Are you, are you starting any land travel again soon or? Yeah, that's a big question. I don't know. There was a time when I was going to beeline it across the South Atlantic and get through the Caribbean before hurricane season. But now I've decided I'm not going to do that because it just seems like too much of a rush. Um, so yeah, first stop from here is about uh, almost 2000 miles sail to St. Helena. And then from there, a lot of countries are still sort of closed like Brazil, um, for me at least. And so I may go all the way to Grenada in the Caribbean which is a pretty long sail, it's uh, 3,700 miles. And, and then from there, I'll, I'll sit around sort of figuring out where to go while the hurricanes are blowing through the Caribbean. And then, yeah, maybe I'll even start going overland up through Central America, if I leave the boat in Central America. I'm, I'm sort of ready to get off the boat because as you can see, it's quite small for me. I can't stand up, I have to sleep on a diagonal on the bed, uh, I'm just, yeah, I was never really planning to spend too much time on this boat. I just sort of wanted to get it to get across the ocean. And yeah, I'm hoping to get back to Toronto and finish the journey up in the summer of 2023. If somebody wants to follow along on your journey, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, so routes of change uh, or routes of change, depending, depending on how you pronounce it. That's R-O-U-T-E-S of Definitely change. Roots. <laughs> roots. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got a YouTube channel. I'm a bit behind on the channel, so you can uh, have to be patient with me because I started it when I was already into the trip. But yeah, all social media routes have changed. And uh, yeah, join me. Join me for the adventure. Happy to share it with you. The challenge that Marcus has set himself may be unique, but surprisingly, the number of people challenging themselves to live their dreams is not as rare as we once thought. We have met so many inspiring people on our voyage who have overcome great difficulties to achieve their goals, and a lot of them don't have YouTube channels. Our takeaway is that it's amazing what is possible when you really want to achieve a goal and are prepared to work hard and make sacrifices to achieve it. Next time we depart from Cape Town and make a four day, 500 mile passage north to Luderitz in Namibia. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the next episode. We release a video every two weeks. If you'd like to find out more about behind the scenes on Florence, track our progress across the oceans in real time, find out where we are right now, or ask us pretty much anything, then please head over to our Patreon site and join the crew. We'd like to thank everyone who supports us to make these videos possible. And a special thank you to our staff patrons. 